Hello everyone, this is Ben Rich here. Um, trying to kind of rekindle my channel that I've neglected for way too long. So many years back I made a video about uh, mounting an orchid on found wood. Um, I got a lot of response over the years to that video and really wanted to revisit the possibility of sharing my experience of gardening in a small apartment space uh, and many of the things that I've learned and practiced to uh, make my life greener. So to start, I thought we'd just get back into things with uh, doing a tour of, a uh, really brief tour of all the spaces I've got in my apartment here. So behind me you can see my patio. Um, this is uh, early to mid-spring here, and so things are starting to come in. I've got some blooms and some greens. Uh, nothing's gotten as big as it will get. Uh, but you can see the front of my patio here, and I'm going to flip the camera around and give you a walking tour. So starting in the front of the patio here, uh, we've got some recent pots that I've planted. Uh, we've got a tomato, a local sage, which is the, a native to uh, the high desert here in Las Vegas. Then we have a standard culinary sage on the left. Uh, some basil that I planted. Over here we've got uh, a lemon, three different types of lavender that I've planted. Another tomato with some uh, variegated thyme. Uh, a eucalyptus tree, which has just exploded in this little pot. Uh, you can actually see where I had a wire trained around it to help uh, straighten the trunk and neglected it for too long and the wire cut into the trunk. But the plant is still, tree is still doing just fine. On the top here, uh, I'm not going to name everything that's on the patio here, but definitely got some uh, variety. Uh, some of these things were grown from seed, like the key lime here, um, which is doing quite well. I recently trimmed it so that it um, will get a little bushier. It was getting kind of lanky. And I've got some volunteer tomatoes that are coming out of the compost that I used to plant that. Uh, a variety of bulbs, some more lavender, some geraniums, a rose bush, and some more bulbs. Uh, three different mints. So we have rent, uh, standard uh, peppermint, spearmint, uh, sorry, not, got peppermint, uh, just a regular like mojito mint and then this guy that I just planted which is a lemon balm which is actually in the mint family. Um, that one I love. I'm looking forward to possibly using that to make some essential oils because uh, it's one of my favorite things to add to baths. Uh, the spearmint looks dreadful right now because it uh, waited a little too long for the watering but it will pop back very quickly. I found that thing as long as you give, give it water it will grow like a weed. Um, up there, we've got some new greens coming out of my grapevine. So this is its third year on the patio and it comes back quite delightfully. Uh, I will be training that up over that twine you can see up there and it will grow and frame the entire patio front. Uh, hummingbird feeder, because uh, we get some hummingbirds that love to nest in this uh, pine tree that's right in front of my window. A couple of hanging tomatoes there from last spring that survived the winter and only just started producing real fruit. Uh, so um, despite the fact that I, my experience was tend to be annuals, this is, <laughs> these tomatoes have turned into perennials for me. Um, have some star jasmine and a begonia in there. The begonia is already starting to bloom. A couple of hanging pots here filled with a number of things. Uh, you can see my... Uh, one of my three bamboos inside there. Uh, that one is an incense bamboo. It's in the timber bamboo family. Uh, and we'll go inside and check out everything from within. All right, so we're inside the patio now. Say hi to Hiro, my, my husky. He was a rescue a couple years ago. Uh, up here, so some of these plants you saw from the front. Uh, again, my uh, incense bamboo, then we have what is supposed to be a timber bamboo in there. I've got two pots of that there and there. Uh, and then we've got a black bamboo. We'll see how any of these do in pots. Um, they are definitely uh, supposed to be way too large of a variety to be growing on a patio here in pots, but uh, I just couldn't resist. I've always wanted particularly a black bamboo, so we'll see what I can make happen with that. Um, just from the back here, another banana tree that I've grown from seed. Uh, we've got some uh, figs, um, which have done pretty poorly. I almost killed them, so I'm trying to bring them back on the patio here. Um, 
before I take them back inside to be uh, decoration plants on the indoors. Uh, kind of just looking up and around the trellis here, those inverse hanging pots for the tomatoes, um, two hanging pots with uh, those burlap liners. Uh, I've got a little Chanel plant here, um, which is just getting water <laughs> runoff from the hanging plant above it. A couple of felt bags that I physically bolted to the wall here um, with some anchors, and those have just done fantastic. Uh, a um, California palm in there, the back end of the grape and the mint. Um, here we've got a couple of interesting things. So these were some amaryllis bulbs I got from Costco a few years ago. Um, after they bloomed, I threw them in a pot and the foliage never died. Um, it lasted over a year and a half with the green leaves that I had. Finally, I just cut them back when they started to get new growth in the middle because the foliage was just out of control. Um, so I'm hoping I can get those to bloom again this year. Uh, inside we have um, some coriander uh, and some um, all of these in here are again some volunteer tomatoes plus um, green onions that uh, same thing down here that were all green onions from the store that uh, I cut and used in my meals and then kept the bases planted them and they do quite well uh, so I've actually harvested these a couple of times you just cut them down to the base and then they'll just keep on growing so you'll kind of get an endless supply of green onions if you um, treat them well like that uh, over here is one of my pride and joys, but it's been a labor, a labor of love, and an expensive one at that. Uh, I have these three, these four wall pla hang, uh, planters. Uh, they're made of felt, um, and I have tried three different times to plant these, and it has been quite challenging uh, because they're full shade. They get almost no direct sun except that very front one. Um, it gets part, uh, direct sun for a brief amount of the day. So they need to be low light plants, but they also need to be low light plants that can handle the 100 plus degrees that we get here, 110, 115, uh, regularly throughout the summer. Um, in addition, they also have to be somewhat drought tolerant because the bag, felt bags are so small, uh, they dry out really quickly. Um, I have them rigged with a drip line system to help keep them wet, but the, even with the drip line, um, they still dry out quite quickly. So this is my most recent planting of them, and we'll see how they do. They're very happy right now in the mild spring weather, uh, but we'll see how they survive this summer. It's mostly... Uh, different varieties of ivy um, and some rosemaries, both creeping rosemary and a bushing rosemary in there, and a few other uh, unique things. Most of the ones that require fuller sun are in the front here, and again, we'll see how they survive our summer. Uh, have some twigs that I'm trying to um, propagate here. All of these cutting twig cuttings are from when I pruned my eucalyptus tree. Uh, some new succulents that I just purchased from Lowe's that I'm going to try to salvage and um, plant indoors eventually. Otherwise here, and then around, and then in the corner here, I have a creeping fig which I have planted and is growing up this piece of wood that I collected uh, in the Berkshires many years ago in Massachusetts and finally found a use for it. Uh, up on the wall, I have a fan that I've mounted. Um, I love this fan, although it's nightmarishly loud. Uh, it's a great kind of industrial fan that I can uh, help keep things cool on the patio or use to dry off when I come out here to clean things. Um, it has several speeds. I've also bought and mounted a uh, misting hose to it so I can turn on the misters, turn on the fan, and keep myself a little cooler out here while I'm working during our hot Vegas summers. The great thing about it too is the clamp that holds the fan, you can just lift it right off of that and it turns into a um, stand that you can just drop it on the floor and place it wherever you need to. Uh, that brings me to watering this patio. Um, I will probably do a video on that alone, but inside the water closet here, I have 
a hose, a water tap, a Y tap that I've tapped off of the cold water feeder into the water heater. And on it, I have a um, compression hose that will expand when it's filled with water, uh, connected to a sprayer. Right now, that's how I'm watering everything is by hand every single day. Uh, because I had to decommission my drip line, but the drip line I will be rebuilding again soon. Uh, I started with a single drip line system, upgraded to this double drip line, and just recently purchased a quad drip line. So this will allow me to do four different um, sections of drip line to the patio uh, to give water at, at regular intervals to things that require uh, different amounts of moisture. So my succulents don't require much, or my palms, those can be watered only maybe once a week, while some of the more tropical items uh, and the wall planting will need watering several times a day. Uh, above, you can see some cafe lights that I've hung, which I recently replaced with LED bulbs, which were one of the first things I installed in this apartment. They make me very happy. I've got them on a timer, so every evening at night, uh, this place just kind of lights up and feels like a uh, like a nice little boutique cafe. And let's head on inside. Quick tour of some of the things that I have indoors. It won't be comprehensive. Um, we have a dendrobium orchid that I just recently gave to my partner for Valentine's Day. Um, so it's been a little unhealthy, so I'm going to be repotting that soon, which I'll do a video on. Um, also have a couple of pineapples, which were actual store-bought pineapples that we ate, and I kept the tops and have planted them. Uh, I can probably do a video on that sometime in the future. A uh, very sad little pothos here um, that did not get enough light for a very long time, so it's very very small plant, uh, but I recently purchased this lamp uh, with a grow bulb on it uh, to help these plants look a little happier. And then behind there, which I could do a video on at some point, is a little paludarium. Uh, it's in desperate need of repair, but there is a yellow and black dart frog and a little gecko in there. Moving on to the home office, we're going to go to the south-facing window here uh, on my desk and behind my desk uh, is my most recent projects. Uh, we'll kind of dive in here. Uh, three little ZZ plants that I recently, it was one pot and then I broke it up into three different pots that I've replanted uh, to, sep to uh, divide that plant. Uh, a little rubber plant, coffee plant, We've got some um, a whole bunch of pothos that I'm trying to propagate in the back, some ivy, um, a split leaf philodendron with some more pothos that I'm trying to uh, propagate inside there. And then behind that is kind of my little interesting experiment right now. So these are window planters um, that I found on Amazon and I have converted them into a little hydroponic space. They fit perfectly on the windowsill there. Uh, I placed some styrofoam to uh, shear up the base there and make them a little more water, uh, splash resistant. Um, inside there, uh, these are buckets that sit inside. They're supposed to be self-watering containers for soil base, but in the bottom there, I've just put an air hose with bubblers. Uh, I keep a hydroponics water solution in there inside these clay pebbles and then I've got these net pots that I've planted three three plants in each pot and they have just exploded. Um, I can do an entire video just on that, show you the before and after, uh, but very, very happy plants in these windows. Um, these are all uh, vegetable garden plants that I've um, that I'm training up some twine that I've connected on these super powerful suction cups. Uh, most of them are beans, which you can see that bean pole right in the middle. I've already had to top that plant, trim that so it stops growing up, it starts to grow out. Uh, the other three types of plants I have in here are some brandywine tomatoes, uh, heirloom tomatoes, all, all of this grown from seed, uh, and a variety of peppers. Um, I couldn't even tell you which ones because I planted uh, sprouted at least six different types of seeds, and I didn't do a good job keeping track of which ones actually sprouted, so I won't know what peppers they are until they actually grow some peppers, <laughs> so that will be fun. All of these are heirlooms, so that'll be kind of interesting to see what, uh, what kind of fruit I get out of these plants. 
to the right of my desk here, we have my bird of paradise uh, growing in a self-watering pot. And behind it is my red-fruited uh, tropical tortoise tank. So we've got a lamp that I recently suspended from the ceiling, which has really changed the experience of this tank. It has made it much more elegant and allows me a lot easier access to work on the tank. Uh, the tank needs a little attention right now, but I'll give you a quick glance at it. Uh, inside there is Shelly Winters, our little female red-footed tortoise. Um, she's just basking there in her little lamp. Uh, got a large piece of cork that serves as her home. So I have carved out some, an entrance in there and she'll climb on in there. Uh, she's got this little pond basin with some hardscaping. And then I had to be very careful about selecting plants that she could not eat. So she will eat anything that's green. Um, and it's very difficult to grow anything in her tank. Uh, I've tried repeatedly to grow moss and she will just devour it before it can ever get established. Uh, down there, I've actually just threw in some ginger that was sprouting in my kitchen. Uh, it shot up and was really big. Uh, she doesn't seem to like the ginger. Um, I recently cut it back just because it had gotten some uh, black flies on it. Um, but already we've got three new shoots coming off of it and that's just going to uh, explode up and grow well out of the tank. Uh, and behind it we have, oh my god, I'm forgetting the name. They are... I'm gonna have to come back to that. I forget what trees those are. Um, but the nice thing about them is the foliage is well out of her reach and the trunks are quite sturdy. Um, so she can't tear them apart. More into the workshop area of things. Here we've got a brand new vanilla pl bean plant, an orchid that I just recently acquired and am trying to train up this uh, sphagnum moss pole, uh, which I made myself and will probably make a video on how to do. Um, I've made another one of these sphagnum moss poles that I will use to plant this uh, giant variegated pothos. Um, so we can try to get that as a large uh, towering plant. Uh, a orchid behind there, just a standard phalaenopsis that needs some repotting. Um, over here, again, kind of the workshop area uh, underneath a grow lamp is a nice Aurelia that I just purchased. A couple of egg cratons with sphagnum moss that I'm using to sprout uh, seeds. Uh, the empty seed spots you saw earlier, those were where I sprouted the seeds from a hydroponics kit set up. And then inside here right now, these uh, this tray is some lavender that I'm growing from seed. And inside here are some other seeds that um, are starting to sprout. I've got a Joshua tree in there and that one little green guy I believe is guava. But uh, I'd have to double check my notes here. Everything else here is kind of plants in recovery or waiting for the next project. So the last thing we'll look at here indoors um, first is the thing that everyone's been asking for, which is how are my mounted orchids mounted using super glue doing? So I'm going to do an entire video on these once I get my new sphagnum moss in the mail because I want to uh, touch these guys up. But as you can see, I've got three different orchids that are doing quite well, at least as well as they can for when I tend to neglect watering them and uh, them trying to survive the uh, zero humidity of our high desert Las Vegas weather. Um, but they've survived for many years mounted just like this without any other attention other than some spraying to water them. Uh, in the back here, I have a tower of containers that are all meant to, that are raising um, isopods and springtails and some moss. On the top there, you saw my nutritional yeast that's meant for uh, feeding those bugs. Um, those are to create the bioactive elements of my turtle and frog tanks. Uh, over here, you have some of my very early projects that are still doing just fine. I recently cut them back, but we've got three mason jars that I drilled holes into to put some hooks in and hang them from the ceiling. 
uh, with a couple of pothos growing out of the back ones there and a spider plant in the front, which is of course trailing down and shooting off its uh, signature runners. And then finally, the last thing we're gonna look at, which is again, the part of the workshop space here, is my worm farm. So this is a purchased worm farm. I've done many attempts at doing a uh, DIY worm farm with varied success, but I found this particular basket, um, this particular unit, uh, which was obviously pre-made, um, just does an exceptional job at what it's, what it's meant to accomplish. So I keep it indoors just because uh, the weather outside gets way too hot for worms. They would not be happy in 110 degrees, uh, 120 degree weather summers uh, in a black box. <laughs> so I keep them indoors in my second bathroom here and uh, I can do a little tour of that. They feed mostly on kitchen scraps, uh, all of my junk mail that I shred and piles and piles of coffee grounds. Um, next, next to it is my um, hand sprayer, which I use to take care of uh, both my orchids and some of my hanging plants. So, I said that was going to be a short video. Uh, that did not turn into a short video. Far from comprehensive, but I definitely covered most of the major projects that I've got going on. Um, so if you saw anything in there that you're most interested in me elaborating on, um, I am eager to find out what people online are looking to see me make videos about. Uh, some of the things I've considered doing, of course, are certain plant focuses, uh, how to do some of the DIY stuff that I've done for mounting and uh, supporting uh, different plants that I've got in my indoor and outdoor space. Um, I can do a video on my drip line system. Um, I need to do a complete reinstall of that on the patio uh, so I can make a video at that time. Um, I can do a video on the kombucha, which I didn't even share in this video, but I've got a kombucha cu culture which I uh, keep up. And uh, anything else that you saw me just kind of drift over with my camera, um, please let me know if there's something that you're interested in me diving into in a, in a dedicated video. So it's good to be back. I'm looking forward to creating more content for you all. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, it's a pleasure to share this because this is definitely my passion project. Um, the nice thing about being in, <laughs> one of the few nice things about being at home these days, working from home uh, during the COVID shutdown, is that, that when I get stressed out, I can come and work on my plants while it's still sunny, uh, as opposed to my usual work life when I would come home, it'd be dark and I'd have to do all my gardening uh, underneath artificial lighting. So that's kind of it. Um, I'm going to include in the description uh, a lot of the things that, are, that you've seen here. Uh, they're all affiliated links, so I, sh I buy most of my stuff on Amazon. Um, some of my stuff I buy in person at Lowe's uh, uh, or some other vendors, but Amazon's my main, my main source of most of my materials. Uh, I've got some affiliated links, so feel free to click on those if you're interested in purchasing any of the things you saw. Um, I do get a kickback for that, which, which I'd be grateful for. Um, otherwise, like and subscribe and uh, look forward to some new content. Have a great one.